during this time, all we want to do is find ways for people to be connected. There's so many people that are alone and, you know, going a little stir crazy in their homes. And it's such a great way for people to feel connected. Today, uh, we are talking with Lisa Grossman, who is the executive director of the Art Guild of Port Washington in Manhasset, New York, um, which is a community visual arts center. And Lisa, you first popped up on our radar because obviously, um, as a public art uh, curator and space, you've had to modify the way you're doing your exhibits. You've moved to some online curation, but we were really excited about this new project that you started called The Great Rainbow Hunt. So we saw on Facebook, somebody just wrote oh you should put a rainbow in your window it would be nice to have something cheerful that people would see and we thought that was such a good idea that we would expand on it everyone should put a rainbow in their window and then people when they go out for walks they can count the number of rainbows they can take pictures of the rainbows they can feel connected to the community in some way because during this time all we want to do is find ways for people to be connected there's so many people that are alone and you know going a little stir crazy in their homes and it's such a great way for people to feel connected but then it kind of spread and we see people that are posting pictures of rainbows that don't live in long island that don't live in new york they've just seen it on our social media and they've taken it to their own neighborhoods you know, I think that because of the way that we now consume a lot of our art, that we've stopped thinking of art as necessarily a community experience. I mean, people don't even go to the movie theaters as much anymore. They watch it at home on their big screens. But I would imagine, given what you and your organization do, that, that you think about the relationship between art and community quite differently. We really do. So like one of the big things that we do here is we host um, different exhibits throughout the year. And we have receptions that are free and open to the public with food and wine and all that. And we get hundreds of people that attend. They look forward to this every month because it's a way to connect with so many people. We do a lot of community events too, free community events for kids, for families. So I imagine this has been a, a frustrating time in a lot of ways. Oh, it really is. So we have all these classes. We have about 15 to 20 classes a week for kids, teens, adults and none of them are coming in. And we're working on online classes, um, but it's a little more difficult because it's very hard for kids to sit still through that. And then you have a lot of elderly people who aren't necessarily familiar with this technology, but we're teaching them. But the big thing we're doing is we have a new exhibit that's supposed to open this weekend, sadly. So what we did is we curated the exhibit online and we're putting together a virtual reception, which we're inviting people to come watch a slideshow of all the pieces that were accepted. It'll be to music, and we plan on having um, you know, a gallery view on Zoom where you could see people's faces that are there, and we told people to bring a glass of wine and your snack. I love it, and I love that technology is what's enabling you to continue to kind of foster that sense of community for and using art to be able to do that. And I don't think that a person would have always necessarily thought of it as technology and art being necessarily in the same space, but one is enabling the other to still be a place of, of bringing the community together. Now it's really quite wonderful. Like we expected to just close down completely for a period of time, but we realized just to make people smile, that's what they need right now is to think of things that inspire them and they feel grateful for and make them feel good. So, you know, we're just starting to advertise that now too. I, I think we're seeing businesses and nonprofits really stop and think about what are the core tenants and the core things we need to continue to deliver and fund. And I think the other thing too is I think so many people right now want to support small businesses and nonprofits, um, but it's kind of up to the small businesses and nonprofits to use marketing and communications to let people know how to support them. I mean, in your case, Lisa, you know, really um, broadcasting the fact that, you know, if you used to come in for classes or if you haven't participated in our classes, we've got this whole new option now for you to participate in the Art Guild. So I, I'm interested in the way, that in, in, if will some of these behavior changes end up sticking? Yeah, I mean, I think we will definitely stick with some of the things we're doing. People love to see the artwork from home and they don't get the opportunity to do that. So I think now that we have this platform set up, you know, it took a long time to get it together over the past two weeks, 
But now that it's together, like we're ready to do this going forward. And we're also seeing with the online classes, we're having people contact us that there's somebody that have never been able to go into a place before, or they live in a rural area. And I think that we are going to continue with online versions of some of the classes that we do. So that way we can reach more people. Amanda is like, Deluxe works with a lot, a lot of nonprofits. How, what are the best things that nonprofits can be doing right now? Not necessarily to get a donation today, but to make sure that when that starts to resume, they're top of mind for people. I think uh, it's really important for nonprofits to be continuing to talk about their mission and how important it is in the world. So uh, nonprofits do a beautiful job with storytelling and talking about the, the people that experience um, what that nonprofit brings to the world. In your case, uh, you know, experience through art and community. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, with asking for, in fact, I think you should be asking for donations right now. I think a lot of people want to figure out a way to help. And volunteerism is increasingly more difficult without being able to go physically to a space. Now, that's great advice. You know, it's a yeah. little scary to ask for donations. You feel like the world is, you know, everyone's asking for monetary donations for the healthcare workers, for this and that. And I feel like it doesn't seem frivolous to ask for art. But, but it isn't because it's making a difference to so many people, to the mental health of so many people that are stuck at home. You know, you need an outlet to relieve stress and anxiety. They're essential to our well-being right now. Anything that can connect us to community, that can give us an outlet, um, that can distract us from what's going on in the world. Like it's it's so important to have that. Well, what I love about the Great Rainbow Hunt too is is just this aspect of kind of we're all in this together. So one of the things that's a part of this process that we want to do is open up a GoFundMe to allow you to continue to offer these online classes and to move more of your exhibits online. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you would use the funds as we're starting to solicit donations? We are so excited about this because we have been meeting over and over again, virtually of course, but how we're gonna make it through this time because we're a nonprofit. The idea is supposed to be that art is accessible to everyone. Our gallery is open for free. We base everything on donations and you know we're not getting them at this point. But we have to pay our staff and we don't know how long we can do that, you know, without some help. And so this would be so great for us. We think what you're doing is really beautiful and we encourage people out there to to put rainbows in your window. We want to start seeing these rainbows pop up across the country, all in the spirit of the fact that we are in this together. So has our rainbow hunt made it to your neighborhood? My daughter and I are working on ours right now. I told her about this project and ours is made out of post-it notes. Um, oh, so we're, we're cool. pretty... You yeah, do like so post-it notes. I know this. I love post-it notes. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got them right here. I'm very excited about this. Great. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy. If you want to help the Art Guild of Port Washington deliver online exhibits and classes to the community free of charge, join Deluxe and Flow Studios in donating at the GoFundMe link in this post. And we'll be continuing to interview small business owners who are stepping up for their communities. So check back at deluxe.com slash bigheart for more incredible stories. Or send us a story from your hometown. Hashtag small business, big heart.